Our next unit is going to take a look at the inverse of a derivative. We're often interested in inverses in mathematics. How can we undo an operation, work backwards to get to the original place if we know what the result is? So that's going to be our question that really drives this entire chapter. But specifically, this, this lesson is going to be, what is the inverse of a derivative? And we used one of two words for the inverse of a derivative. A common one you will hear is the antiderivative. Which the idea of the antiderivative is if we have some function f prime of x, the derivative of f of x is f prime of x is equal to a capital F of x then the antiderivative and the notation for antiderivative is this little squiggly line of the answer is equal to that function f of x so it works backwards it gives us the underivative which basically means we can use all the same rules in reverse it's like a game of jeopardy where we have the answer and we need to use what we know to come up with the question. Let's look at these rules in reverse. Let's find the antiderivative of just a constant dx. Well, the antiderivative of a constant, if I think about derivatives, The derivative of something equals a constant. Well, we know that the derivative of a constant times x is equal to the constant because the x drops down to 0. So the antiderivative of the constant then is going to be the constant times x. Well, there's a little caveat that we're also going to remember, and that's we need to add what we're going to call the plus c. The plus c is because the derivative of a constant is 0. So we don't know if there is a constant. We'll call that constant c. So we always add it. And so if I think about my kx plus c, if I were to take the derivative of kx plus c, the derivative of kx plus a constant, the derivative of kx is just k, and the derivative of the constant is 0. And notice that k is what we started with in the original problem. So our first rule in reverse is the antiderivative of any constant is that constant times x plus another constant. We can also use the exponent rule in reverse. If we think about what the exponent rule did, is it multiplied by the exponent, then reduced the exponent by 1. So we're going to do the opposite of that, which is to increase the exponent by 1. We're going to divide by the new exponent. And of course, we'll always need a plus c. Two more antiderivative rules we want to learn at this point, and that's the antiderivative of e to the x dx. And if we remember our derivative rules, the derivative of e to the x was just e to the x. And so going backwards, the antiderivative of e to the x is just e to the x. But don't forget the plus c adding that constant. And the antiderivative of 1 over x dx is a special one because we can't use the exponent rule on it. If we wrote this as an exponent, it would be x to the negative 1. 
And when we increase the exponent by 1, we get 0. And we can't divide by that new exponent. We can't divide by 0. So it needs to be something different. But if I think we should recognize 1 over x, we know the derivative of something is equal to 1 over x. Do you remember what that was? It was the derivative of the natural log of x. So we're going to say the antiderivative of 1 over x is the natural log of x plus a constant. Now, technically, it's the natural log of the absolute value of x. But in most of our applications, the absolute value doesn't make much difference. So these four rules you should quickly commit to memory so that you can use them frequently without much difficulty. Let's practice using these rules in reverse, starting with several examples. First, we're going to do the integral or the antiderivative of x to the 2 thirds dx. Well, the exponent rule says we're going to take that exponent and we're going to increase it by 1. 2 thirds plus 3 thirds is 5 thirds. Then we'll divide by the new exponent. Well, dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of 3 fifths. And then don't forget to do the plus c. We now have our antiderivative of x to the 2 thirds. We have the solution. If we took the solution and took the derivative of it, we would get x to the 2 thirds. Let's try a polynomial. Let's do the antiderivative or the integral of x to the fourth plus 5x cubed plus 2dx. And as we work through this term by term, we increase the exponent by 1, x to the fifth, and divide by the new exponent, plus increase the exponent by 1, x to the fourth, and divide by the new exponent, plus 2 is a constant. And we know the antiderivative of a constant is that constant times x. And then, of course, we have to add the plus c at the end of each problem. Let's do one more example. Let's do the antiderivative, or the integral, of 3 e to the x plus 3 over x plus x cubed plus 3 dx. As we take the antiderivative here, we know the antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x. And just like with derivatives, we keep the constants along for the ride. Plus, 3 is a constant. And the antiderivative of 1 over x, we recognize, is the natural log of x. Plus, the antiderivative of x cubed, increase the exponent by 1 and divide by the new exponent x to the fourth divided by 4, plus the antiderivative of 3 is just 3 times x. And don't forget the plus c. So really, we're just working with all of our derivative rules in reverse as we figure out if we have the answer, what was the original problem that this came from? And then the little caveat, we have to add the plus c, because there might have been a constant there that we don't know. We do actually have the ability to find the constant if we wish. We can find the constant if we have a point. Because all we have to do is solve for the constant c. So for example, if we're looking for the antiderivative of 3x squared minus 6x 
minus 7 dx if we know that f of 2 is equal to 10. Well, let's use our antiderivative rules. Increase the exponent by 1 to get x cubed. Divide by our new exponent. 3 divided by 3 is 1. Minus. Increase the exponent by 1 to get x squared. Divide by the new exponent. 6 divided by 2 is 3. Minus 7 is a constant, so 7x plus our c. Now, what we know to find that c is that when x is equal to 2, the whole thing is equal to 10. So if we plug 2 in, we have 2 cubed minus 3 times 2 squared minus 7 times 2 plus our constant is equal to 10. Well, 2 cubed is 8. 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12. So 8 minus 12 minus 14 gives us negative 18 on the left, plus the constant is equal to 10. So if we add the 18 to both sides, we find out the constant is actually equal to 28. So for our final antiderivative, bringing this down, we have x cubed minus 3x squared minus 7x plus our constant, which we found out for this situation, is 28. Let's try one more example where we have to solve for the constant as we find the antiderivative or the integral of a function. Let's do the antiderivative or the integral of x squared plus 2e to the x plus 4 cubed root of x dx. One thing that I do notice is the cube root of x is really x to the 1 3rd. So I'm going to keep that in mind as I take this antiderivative. So with the x squared, we increase the exponent by 1, divide by the new exponent, plus. 2 is a constant. The antiderivative of e to the x is just e to the x. Plus, with our cube root of x, we increase the exponent by 1. 1 third plus 3 thirds is 4 thirds. Divided by the new exponent, which means we're multiplying by the reciprocal of 3 fourths. The denominator will divide out with the 4, leaving behind just a 3 plus a constant. So this is the antiderivative. But we're going to find that constant if I know that f of 0 is equal to 1. So if we plug 0 in for the x, we get 0 cubed over 3 plus 2e to the 0 plus 3 times 0 to the 4 thirds plus our constant equals that solution of 1. Well, the 0 cubed divided by 3 is 0. The 0 to the 4 thirds times 3 is 0. We know e to the 0 is 1. So 2 times 1 is 2 plus c equals 1. And so if we subtract 2 from both sides, we find out the constant in this case is actually equal to negative 1. So for our final antiderivative, we have x cubed over 3 plus 2e to the x plus 3x to the 4 thirds plus our constant, which in this case is negative 1. And we now have our integral. That is how we do the opposite of a derivative. Term by term, we go through and use these derivative rules in reverse. Take a look at practicing these. You should be very comfortable with these integral rules in reverse before we move on to our next section. So come to class with any questions that you have, and we'll also take a look at some applications. We will see you then.